A TC, 18 icons made of wood bark, have been set up beside the path leading down to St. Stephen's Spring, an area set aside for personal reflection and silence. These icons, visibly African in inspiration, were made in the workshop of the brothers in Nairobi by Brother Denis using local bark. They form a gospel path which follows the main events of the life of Jesus. As you can't be here in Tese in this moment, a group of volunteers living here in Tese invites you to meditate with them on the first four stations of this path. These icons want to help us to enter more in the mystery of God becoming a human being in Jesus, the mystery of incarnation. At each station we will read the Bible text to recall the Gospel story and one of the volunteers shares with you a few thoughts to help you to pray personally with the text and the icon. You are invited to stop this video after each meditation and to take several minutes of silence for your personal prayer before you move on to the next step. Annunciation according to the Gospel of St. Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent by God to a virgin named Mary. He came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But Mary was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greetings this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Mother of God, I am a man who has been born. It will be with me as you have said. Och ingen lämnade henne. Mary, the believer who listens. Mary was young and poor. She was very human, but was still called to carry the Son of God. She didn't know what would happen, but despite of this and her doubts, she decided to trust and believe. All she had to do was to say yes. Listening doesn't always begin in an easy situation. Sometimes we have to be confronted in order to listen. When we find ourselves at a crossroad, we have the opportunity to listen inwardly. What does God want from me? God never forces himself or his love upon us. We have to choose whether we want to listen, trust and believe. Mary made herself available for God. She was trusted with this and could therefore also trust in return. But it's not a question about being strong or not, but rather daring to take the risk and make ourselves vulnerable in order to be carried by the grace of God. Vulnerability is scary, but it's also there we can discover beautiful things. In God, we receive the gift of Christ and can share him with the world. Let us pray for those who are doubting. May they find the courage to trust in God and his plan for us. And whatever this day may bring, let us praise God's name.
Visitation, according to the Gospel of St. Luke. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. Toen Elisabeth de stem van Maria hoorde, trappelde het kind in haar buik. De Heilige Geest kwam in, Alice, kwam in Elisabeth en zij riep naar Maria. Jij bent gezegend, meer dan alle andere vrouwen. En ook het kind dat je krijgt zal gezegend zijn. Two very different women find themselves in a similar situation. Although Elizabeth is already older and Mary is still young, both are pregnant of their first child at the same time. God had previously sent an angel to announce the coming of both the children and to tell about their special future works. Elizabeth learned that the child she carries will be the forerunner of the child Mary carries. The children's different callings could have provoked negative emotions such as envy or jealousy. However, Elizabeth simply rejoices in her task and shows nothing um, but joy and support towards Mary. We can follow her example and rejoice in the gifts God granted other people and the tasks he assigned to each one of us. Let us recognize how God is at work in others and in ourselves and celebrate each our contributions towards God's kingdom on earth. birth of Jesus, according to the Gospel of St. Luke. Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David, called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and laying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child laying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard, as it had been told to them.
disse-lhes o anjo, não te mais, pois já denuncio com grande alegria uma notícia. Hoje, na cidade de David, nasceu o Salvador, que é o Messias do Senhor. Isto vos servirá de sinal para o encontrar -te. Encontrareis um menino envolto em panos, numa mãe doira. It is Christmas, and no one given shelter for a baby, for God. God was born poor among the poor. Jesus don't born in a big palace, don't born in a full of riches, but in a small village. Have the first visit of shepherds and not from important men of the society. How many times we lost the face of the baby Jesus in our societies? How many times we forgot the poor? Let us pray for all the people who don't have a shelter. And for all the people given hospitality. Fly to Egypt, according to the Gospel of St. Matthew. An angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt, and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Out of Egypt I have called my son. Lleva't, pren el nen i la seva mare, fuig cap a Egipte i queda't fins que jo t'ho digui, perquè Herodes buscarà l'infant per matar-lo. Many people in many places around the world, closer or farther from us, are now in the same situation. Get up, take your family, pack a few things and escape. No time for goodbyes. No time for a clear plan of where to go or how to get there. They are in danger and they need to escape. In this situation, hope is the key word. Hope that you will find a safe place to stay where you will be able to rebuild your life. Hope that someone will welcome and help you. When we are faced to these situations, when we meet migrants, refugees, exiles, how do we welcome them? Do we see in them the family of Nazareth? Let us pray for migrants, refugees and exiles and for our societies that we may be welcoming to them. Eternal God, at Christmas, by Jesus coming on earth, you gave humanity a new beginning. An unknown light arose, a hope of peace for the whole human family. You make this light to shine in us by your Holy Spirit. 
and it illuminates our darkness. You renew our wonder at your coming in our hearts. So we want to sing to you without end, while remaining close to all those who are in difficulty and suffering, and who long to see your light. Louder, the Lord is